Not too long ago, our ability to explore underwater was limited by our lung capacity. Only with the invention of diving bells and eventually submarines have we been able to shed some light on this underwater world. But we've come a long way since then, creating some incredibly smart ways to survive under the waves. Let's take a look at some of the smartest creations enabling us to breathe underwater. Amazing. Number 10. Air Buddy Between the tanks, flippers, and hoses, the average diver needs around 30 kilograms of equipment. This can make diving a tall order for those of us who are unfit or infirm. That's where the Air Buddy comes in. Touted as a cross between snorkeling and diving, the Air Buddy weighs just 20 kilograms and floats on the surface up to 12 meters above the diver, so you can feel free underwater. Not only can it fit in most carry-on bags, it is also stupidly simple to operate. Just switch it on, hook it up, and get exploring. Once activated, the Air Buddy's 12-volt battery starts charging its onboard air compressor. It then sucks in air from the surface, pushes it through a line of rubber tubing, and into the diver's regulator. Though the Air Buddy only operates at very shallow depths, it's both cheaper and more sustainable than your typical bag of scuba gear. Number 9. Diving Helmets First produced by the Dean Brothers in the 1820s, metal diving helmets have become an icon of deep-sea exploration. Typically, rigid, modern-day versions of these devices can be used with and without scuba gear. Though these heavy helmets have mostly been replaced by lighter alternatives, they're still relatively common in areas bombarded by radiation or oozing with toxic sludge. Helmet diving is not only great for the untrained, but also perfect for L'Oreal models. Unlike other options in this list, diving helmets keep divers' hair completely dry. These helmets are typically connected to the surface with a rubber tube and valve. Fresh, oxygenated air is pushed into the helmet with every breath. Stale, CO2-laden air exits the helmet through the specially made exhaust ports. In some helmets, the diver's breath is just scrubbed of carbon dioxide and pumped back into the helmet. This design is so simple, in fact, that one YouTuber replicated it using an office water cooler, some tubing, and a bike pump. And if you aren't a fan of the copper headgear, you can try your hand at making your own diving bubble by attaching upside-down buckets to the bottom of the ocean. Number 8. Aquaman Crystal Dubbed the Aquaman Crystal by the Danish researchers who developed it, this crystalline material is capable of absorbing and storing oxygen much more efficiently than a scuba tank. All it takes to release the stored gases is a small amount of heat. Working similarly to a sponge, these crystals can be filled with air and emptied repeatedly. So, could a spoonful of these crystals really suck all the oxygen out of the room? Probably not. But scientists do think divers could get by on a handful of them. This would eliminate the need for heavy, pressurized tanks and regulators. It could also help free those with emphysema and other lung disorders from the burden of lugging around oxygen tanks. Sadly, it may be years before we see them in action because they're still being researched, but they're a promising development for sure. Number 7. Hyperpnea How long do you think someone can hold their breath in the water for? 4 minutes? Maybe 5? Well, the current world record holder, Alix Segura Vendril, only threw in the towel after 24 minutes and 3.45 seconds. So why bother breathing underwater if you can just hold your breath for this insanely long amount of time? If you're looking to shatter that record though, you'll need to learn how to put a stop to your respiratory process through apnea. Best left to professionals, long-term apnea is only possible after achieving a state of deeper and more rapid breathing known as hyperpnea. While a state of hyperpnea allows divers to increase their lung capacity, it can be deadly to the untrained. This rapid deoxygenation can lead to blackouts and accidental drowning. So, unless you've gone through hundreds of hours of diaphragm training, attempting to shatter Alix's world record are best left to the professionals. Number 6. Breathing Observation Bubble Breathing observation bubbles, aka bobs, are a far safer way for uncertified divers to explore coral reefs and shallow water shipwrecks. Looking like a cross between a yellow submarine and a mobility scooter, bobs work thanks to some elementary physics. The dome on top of the scooter displaces enough water to keep the diver's head dry, while an onboard supply pumps in enough air to keep them from drowning. To descend or ascend, the rider pushes a button, steering mimics a real scooter. Those who have used a bob compare it to taking a ride on a seahorse, but slower, unwieldy, and notably free of bells and whistles. The Hublot exosuit is a different story. Sponsored by the famed watch company of the same name, this $600,000 wearable submarine is full of special features. It not only allows the divers to move about while submerged 300 meters below the surface for up to 50 hours, but it can also capture HD video, light dark spaces, and zoom about at high rates of speed thanks to inbuilt thrusters. Number 5. Skorkel 
If the Air Buddy is still too heavy for you, you should consider the Skorkel. About the size and weight of a standard bottle, this rechargeable oxygen tank can provide enough air for 10 minutes of uninterrupted diving. Though the device features both a regulator and pressure gauge, the latter can't be used without taking the device from your mouth. Touted as a cheap alternative to scuba certification, this device claims to give even unexperienced divers a chance to explore the underwater world. As long as the uncertified keep it to 3 meters and shallower, of course. That's why professional divers are skeptical of it. You see, without an onboard depth gauge, newbie divers have no way to judge whether or not they're past the 3 meter limit set by the safety manual. Worse yet, there's nothing to prevent divers from dropping the device and sentencing themselves to a watery grave. With cases of the bends likely, many believe it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. So, unless you're scuba certified, it's probably best to leave this thing on the shelf. Number 4. Personal Submarines When people think submarine, they tend to imagine something like a U-boat. But, submarines are now so much more than machines of war. Though the first personal submarine was invented in the 1970s, it's only recently that they've started to hit their stride. With prices ranging from 18,000 to 80 million, mini subs come in a wide array of sizes and functionalities. All of them, however, work, thanks to a mixture of displacement and buoyancy. Using two or more tanks on the side of the sub, which can be filled with air or water at will, the submarine can control its depth in the water. Compressed air is then circulated through the sub to ensure that everyone inside can breathe. The lightest and most compact personal submarine available, the Deep Flight Dragon, looks like an aquatic Formula One car. It's also the first submarine with hovering capabilities. With easy, intuitive controls, this mini-sub allows its driver to set depth limits before getting into the water. Eco-friendly and lightweight, this high-end mini-sub comes equipped with a variety of onboard safety systems. But this featherweight can't match the underwater depths of the Triton. Geared towards the super-rich like Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, who owns a 10-passenger version that costs $12 million, Triton submarines offer crystal-clear views of the ocean at depths up to 1,000 meters. Much less streamlined than the Dragon, this mini-sub looks like something out of 20,000 leagues under the sea. Just take a gander at it in action. Don't get your hopes up, though. Not unless you've got a yacht and $4 million. Number 3. DIY Oxygen Tanks even Atlantis isn't immune to DIYers. A quick Google will reveal dozens of ways to make your own underwater breathing device. Two of them caught my eye in particular. The first, made by a man named Ruloff, wraps around your arm for ease of use. Made from two small nebulizers, a nail polish cap, a water bottle cap, some vinyl tubing, a shin guard, a bit of glue, and the mouthpiece from a snorkel, it's pretty easy to cobble together. Just glue the caps where needed, pump the nebulizer tanks full of air, and jump in. Just look at him go! The second DIY tank comes to us from Eastern Europe. While Rulov went for compact and rechargeable, this DIYer opted for longevity. Made from a gallon bottle, a few feet of vinyl, a bike pump, a water valve, and an inflated condom, this homemade oxygen tank allows users to slowly draw air from the onboard balloon. It lasts roughly 5 minutes between refills. Number 2. Snorkels Snorkels have existed in one form or another since 3000 BC. For those of you who don't know, snorkeling is the practice of swimming through water while equipped with a diving mask, a specially shaped breathing tube, and swim fins. Popular at tropical resorts, snorkeling gives divers a chance to observe the underwater world without disturbing it. While it requires no special training, snorkelers are unable to go more than a foot or two beneath the water. As exhaling doesn't push out all the carbon dioxide out of the breathing tube, snorkeling for long periods of time can increase your risk of hypercapnia, which is elevated levels of CO2 in the blood. If you've always wondered why people don't design longer snorkels, there's a good reason for that. Their optimal length is 40 centimeters since longer tubes wouldn't allow you to breathe any deeper, since it would place your lungs in deeper water where the surrounding water pressure is higher. Still, there's one snorkel looking to shape up this age-old industry. The TriMagic Snorkel Mask not only offers unobstructed views of the sea, but prevents fogging via two-way exhaust. Looking like something out of a sci-fi movie, this shark-like snorkel only runs you about 40 bucks. Number 1. Scuba Diving Okay, okay, this one's obvious. But unless you've actually tried it, you might not be aware exactly what it entails. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, aka scuba gear, have existed in one form or another since 1943. A variety of technological advances since then have made the equipment safer, more affordable, and easier to use. But scuba diving can be dangerous. There are two main reasons for this, barotrauma and the bends. Barotrauma occurs due to the sudden change in pressure experienced while diving. 
and leads you to injuries like ruptured eardrums and burst air sacs. The bends, meanwhile, occurs when a diver reaches the surface before certain gases, like nitrogen, in their body have been dispersed throughout their tissues. These excess gases form bubbles in their body that can cause nerve damage, paralysis, and brain death. Scuba divers need lots of equipment to stay safe. One of these, the buoyancy control device, is inflated and deflated to control a diver's level in the water. Then there are air tanks, which aren't filled with pure oxygen. They're filled with an atmospheric-like mixture of nitrogen and oxygen called nitrox. Since sucking in air at 3000 psi could kill you, all scuba divers need a regulator. This device not only adjusts the pressure to a safe level, but delivers air on demand. It's all very technical, which is why you need proper training before trying it. So would you try to make your own oxygen tank? Were you surprised by the number of ways humans have managed to conquer the depths? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.